This is Free Talk Live, talk radio that you control. You can call in and talk about whatever is on your mind. That number is 855-450-3733. With you tonight, it's Aria. Jay. And Mark. And I've got good news for the 11,000 people who have been convicted of marijuana-related offenses in the state of Illinois now that it has legalized marijuana, joint becoming the 11th state to legalize recreational Recreational, cannabis. okay. And evidently, the governor, in a shocking move, has granted more than 11,000 pardons for low-level marijuana convictions today. Describing the step as a first wave. I was of always thousands. curious whether they could. Uh, eleven thousand doesn't sound like the governor went through and signed eleven thousand pieces of paper. Good Lord, I hope not. It sounds like it was a mass pardoning. Yeah, yeah. Probably just one sheet of paper. Kind of like what nobody wants to do uh, when he becomes governor of New Hampshire. Yeah, just mass pardoning of people. The expungement process is a key part of the law. Uh, it takes effect Wednesday, and it made Illinois the Illinois sorry the eleventh state to legalize marijuana for people twenty one or older. I don't know why it's not eighteen or older. Well, I guess I do because didn't the federal government just raise the tobacco age to twenty one? I believe so. I, I certainly read an article like that. I wasn't entirely clear what the implications of that are. I think they can possess it but not buy it. Uh, again, I don't know what all the implications are. I can see why somebody would say, all right, marijuana is a mind-altering substance. Alcohol is a mind-altering substance. Apparently, the age for mind-altering substances is 21. So, clack, 21. Yeah, but caffeine is a mind-altering substance. Certainly is for me. Yeah, so, anyway, when they crafted the policy, lawmakers said Caffeine's never been illegal, though. Alcohol and marijuana have. Yeah. Lawmakers said that they wanted to repair some of the damage caused by law enforcement's efforts to combat sale and use of the drug, particularly in minority communities. Which has always been a glaring issue with recreational cannabis being legalized in states is that they still have people filling their prison cells for marijuana convictions. Yeah, I was I was curious about that. I was going to, going to ask how many states that you know of have pardoned the people who were in for solely marijuana charges. Um, California did it as well, right? That Well, California, I don't know that California even has recreational marijuana legalized. Um, I, again, I, this isn't my issue. Sure. Um, it's but not mine either. I don't even smoke. Their medical marijuana law was so broad that basically all you had to do was have some planning skills and you had legal marijuana okay well apparently the uh the pardons while a good thing they only affected people with misdemeanor so it was relatively small amounts of pot and you know it's stupid to arrest people for having like two or three joints on them or whatever but it wasn't going to apply to people who had like a pound of weed in their truck right. when they got pulled over. So, which, which is stupid. I don't care if the guy had a hundred pounds of weed on him. I mean, he, sh- you know, they should. It's a victimless crime. And then I know in Massachusetts years ago, it was like um, decriminalized to a misdemeanor, like a you know to a certain level, but it was a felony again if it was like a third offense or a fourth offense. I, I right. don't exactly remember, but right. I mean, honestly, if marijuana should be legal recreationally, should it be a problem if I have a hay truck full of bales of marijuana um, going down the road? I mean, I mean obviously there, not. there's if bootleg had... beer in America. Do we want to lock up bootleg beer distributors? Is there bootleg beer? Yeah, you still? can make beer that's without uh, licensing, especially okay. in certain states. Oh, there's yeah. a lot of bootleg uh, alcohol around. But, but, but you can certainly bootleg liquor. There was an interesting sure. story here out of the Free State Project. Many years ago, um, a one-time host of the show was distilling liquor in his home, and uh, he saw the cops come and then went like to the bathroom or something. So I saw the cops like pull up outside, went to the bathroom or something, and then comes out, and his still's gone. He w- was he distilling it for private use? To the best of our knowledge, but we don't know anything. Like all we know is the still was gone. <laughs> I mean, presumably somebody out of his home. Yes. Wow, that's amazing. I believe it was on his like his porch, but it's like a screened-in okay. porch yeah. situation. Um, so they had to come through a door. Whoever did it certainly committed a burglary. Certainly. Um, but I, we don't we don't really know. Interesting. Well, state officials. 
to, to come back to your question, I don't think it would be it should be a problem. I mean, we have trucks that are driving up massive amounts of alcohol every single day and no sure. one's bothering them about it. I mean, you could load up the back of your car with as much wine and liquor as you could fit in there. And you wouldn't get in trouble for possessing too much alcohol. Right. There's you, minivans cruising around with massive amounts of opiates in them, distributing them to, uh, you know, hospitals and, uh, you know, pharmacies and whatnot. Yeah. So state officials estimate that 116,000 convictions involving 30 grams of marijuana or less. Now, I haven't smoked weed in a really long time. Uh, back when I smoked, it was measured in ounces and quarter ounces. I don't have much perspective on what 30 grams of 28 grams is. in an ounce. Okay. That's not a lot of pot, including for possession of the drug, are eligible for pardons under the new law. So if you had an ounce, essentially, or just slightly below an ounce, you were eligible for a pardon. But any more than that, it's not really doing a lot of people good. I mean, I don't want to criticize it because it's great. 11,000 people are being pardoned, but it didn't stretch nearly far enough. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm happy to see the 11,000 people, uh, misdemeanor violation uh, level people for marijuana getting pardoned. And as I understand it, that can be useful for getting college loans and those sorts of things. See, I was going to say reelected, but I'm a bit jaded. Well, I don't know. Um, but I, I, I would agree with you that if marijuana – is safe to make recreational uh, for recreation is safe to make legal for recreational use then you should pardon the guy who got caught with a bale of it in the trunk of his car and had no weapons no stolen merchandise did not punch the cop in the face you know none of these things right like i'm only talking about a uh, a crime of a large level drug pr- possession I don't care if he had a whole bunch of assault rifles. I mean, oh, I, I agree. I'm with you. The right to do, I don't care if he shot the cops dead when the cops came <laughs> after him. He was defending himself. Well, <laughs> I mean, I'll say this though: there is no confusion surrounding somebody who um, simply had a, lo- a lot of pot. I think eleven thousand people being pardoned for you know having the wrong species of salad in their pocket essentially is a very low number in Illinois. Uh, but let's think about it, because it's Puritanism ultimately that caused marijuana to become illegal in the first place, right? And the same people outlaw shrooms. It's it's like they're giving God I, the finger and I, saying, you messed up, and now we, fallible human beings, are going to fix the mistake you made when you created this plant. Puritanism was the excuse that was pushed by Dow Corporation, DuPont Corporation, U.S. Standard Oil, which eventually got broke up into seven mega oil corporations, Exxon, Shell, Chevron, Amoco, Mobil, there's a few others. Uh, they are the ones that really wanted to get rid of hemp. They wanted to get rid of hemp because a machine was created that made the hemp processing really simple, really efficient, and made hemp very, very viable Also, and uh, for using paper, for using fabric, for using rope. Uh, DuPont, DuPont Corporation was working on a, um, it was before nylon, I can't remember what it was called, but it was like an acrylic type, you know, stuff for, um, you know, some kind of fabric uh, that was like synthetic. And hemp, this uh, easy processing of hemp was was definitely a huge competition. Basically, it was going to put Dow and DuPont and a corporation, the Dow Corporation owned Millions of acres of timber rights in the northwest United States. It was going to, you know, that hemp can regrow so fast uh, when you do hemp. And then also Henry Ford did a deal with a man named Rudolph Diesel uh, to put diesel engines in all the Ford cars and to run exclusively on hemp oil. The idea was we could, you know, have hemp oil. And then but Ford really hated Rockefeller because Rockefeller also lobbied to make alcohol illegal because alcohol was the motor fuel of the day in rural America uh, before alcohol was prohibited. And all these stills all over rural America were seized by essentially, what is the IRS now? The revenue men. Uh, so people couldn't be independent with their fuel. Fascinating. More about marijuana from people who actually don't smoke marijuana. 855-450-3733. Let us know what you think about the legalization of cannabis.
This is Free Talk Live, talk radio that you control. You can call in and talk about whatever is on your mind. That number is 855-450-3733. And with you tonight, it's Aria. Jay. And Mark. And Bitcoin.com has launched a trading platform that you can find at local.bitcoin.com that allows you to buy or sell Bitcoin cash using dozens of payment methods like PayPal, Venmo, bank deposit, remittances, or meeting in person with cash. There are no ID requirements to sign up for and use the site, and all encrypt- all communications between buyers and sellers are encrypted. Finally, a global trading platform that respects your privacy. Visit local.bitcoin.com to get started trading Bitcoin Cash. Again, that's local.bitcoin.com. Getting right into it, let's go to the phones. We've got John calling from Oregon. John, you are on Free Talk Live. <laughs> LRN.FM. I did. Excellent. I got this. What a waste <laughs> of time. So for those who are unaware, again, we have a dump button that allows us to dump the last several seconds-ish of audio. Right. So, but as all these folks do is give us practice. Yeah. Yeah. I guess so. So thanks. Appreciate so, it. And, and there's a second layer also because the uh, if the board ops paying attention at uh, GCN... Yeah. He, he he's able to dump it too in case we miss it, right? He yeah, he usually beats me to it, but that time I was actually faster. So yay me. And <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, our our hosts do need practice at this. I've got to sure. say that one time a year that somebody slips up and drops the f bomb, I'm not always ready. But I what was it, John? Yeah, John, a salute out to you for the training that you're giving Free Talk Live. Thank you. <laughs> All right, keeping going. Uh, let's go right to the phones again. We got Bad Slave calling. Bad Slave, you're on Free Talk Live. Well, thank you, Aria and Jay and Mark. Hey, um, I appreciate the uh, call. I uh, I'm just angry uh, that there is this period of time since you know the benefits of of hemp, cannabis, everything else, you know, around those types of plants that has been suppressed by mostly the the, uh, actions and uh, and threats of government. You know, it, 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 you know, well, if cannabis was bad for it, it would be mandated. But if it was bad for us, it would be mandated by the government, not <laughs> it'd be on the food pyramid. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, well, it, it, in 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 a lot of ways, that's absolutely true. Even with cocaine and and you know they they're shipping it up here, uh, clandestine, you know, smuggling it up here to uh, to feed the the need. But I, but I, but 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 I don't care about you know I, you know there are benefits to opioids and whatever else uh, probably even some use of cocaine for for different medicinal purposes but the but the the benefits I mean here we are all in a, up in arms about uh, uh, you know the climate change. And, you know, and everybody's trying to say, oh, it's all that CO2. Well, uh, if you grow hemp and you make diesel fuel out of it, it's a it's a renewable arrangement. And uh, and, you know, they were about to set it up. And, yeah, I'd like to and, point out that um, nitrous oxide is produced by corn plants, and corn plants are in ethanol. <laughs> and so these, you know, this is for all those out there that believe that the government is somehow a good organization to fix the global warming crisis. Yes, I get it. People don't agree with you, and maybe you think they're dumb dumbs. But remember what you think if you believe in global warming, probably. Not everybody, but a lot of people. Global warming would be a benefit, not a crisis. I mean, well, well, hold on, hold on. Let, me fin- let me finish the statement. If you believe in global warming, you likely believe the government is going to solve that problem. If you think that, consider that the government tried to solve that problem with ethanol, and it started growing more corn, which produces nitrous oxide, which is a far greater greenhouse gas than CO2 is. 
Look it up. Don't just go and forget about it. Look it up because this is the organization you want to solve this problem. It can't. And, and it Mark, never does. Hold Mark, on, Bad Slave. Jay, actually, you had a point you wanted to make. Well, global warming. I got a few points about what Bad Slaves had to say because uh, I have experience directly with ethanol production when I was in Colorado. But global warming is not a crisis. What it will be a crisis is global cooling. And we can't control. I mean, they're trying like crazy with HARP and all kinds of other crap. And there's geoengineering, which there's permits for that have been taken out by corporations. And there's evidence of Is it HARP shut down? Who the, who knows? If it's there and they can do it, they're doing it. They're playing with it. And that's my assumption. I mean, we are dealing with a lot of the, the most evil people that exist strive to get in high-ranking government positions. That's right. So, you know, the earth has, you know, there is a time for hundreds of thousands of years that New York City was under 80 or, or under 80 meters of ice. There is times where it was the earth was so warm because of the proximity of this massive ball of fire that we call the sun uh it, that Florida was under, you know, a mile of water. Uh, for example, or 80 meters of water. I can't remember. Maybe it was a mile of ice in, in New York. But I've been listening to a lot of these, you know, climate uh, scientists, and, and a lot of them are coming sure. out. I mean, there's a lot of, I, I, I listen, been, listen to a lot of audio books while I work and while I'm plowing snow. And, you know, the, and the thing is, too, with CO2, which they're causing the thing, Al Gore says is an inconvenient truth uh, thing, movie or whatever, that uh, if you remove the, uh, the, uh, uh, what's it? Uh, the, the water vapor. If you remove water vapor, uh, CO two levels uh, have a have a significant like amount on or, or something to do with the heating and cooling. Well, the thing is, is the Earth's atmosphere is literally eighty six thousand parts water vapor and one part CO two. Uh, there's a uh, clip somewhere. Of- See, my perspective is very different. I just don't care. Uh, any species that would actually destroy its own environment to the extent that they cannot survive there doesn't deserve to continue surviving anyway. It's, sure. like, it's like a tapeworm that goes in and actually kills its host. Host. The tapeworm is supposed to kill the host. Well, the idea is is to agree whether or not the uh, you know we the cells of the tapeworm are agreeing whether or not uh, man is uh, you know poisoning his own environment with uh, what it seems to be the conversation about is CO two. I would argue that we probably could do far more by talking about greenhouse gases than just discussing CO. CO2. But what you see here is three different people with three different opinions and the idea that somehow all of this is going to come together. The best bet, I think, is technology. If CO2 is a problem, then enough people need to agree to build CO2 scrubbing machines or something, um, you yeah, know, breed a plant trees. that uses more CO2, something. Yeah, I would tend to agree. What are your thoughts on global warming? Is it a concern? Are we denialists? Let us know. 855-450-3733. Again, that's 855-450-FREE, as in Free Talk Live. Bitcoin.com has launched a trading platform at local.bitcoin.com, allowing you to buy or sell Bitcoin cash via dozens of payment methods like PayPal, Venmo, bank deposit, remittances, or meeting in person with cash. There are no ID requirements to sign up for and use the site, and all communications between buyers and sellers are encrypted. Finally, a global trading platform that respects your privacy. Visit local.bitcoin.com to get started trading Bitcoin cash. Local.bitcoin.com. This is Free Talk Live, talk radio that you control. You can call in and talk about whatever is on your mind. That number is 855-450-3733. With you tonight, it's Aria. Jay. And Mark. I want to tell you about the Edge Wallet. It's available for both iOS and Android. It's the mobile wallet that I use on a day-to-day basis to buy, sell, trade, and securely hold cryptocurrencies. It's user-controlled, so you always own your own money. It supports Bitcoin Core, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, Tokens, Monero, Ripple, Stellar, and so many more. Being built by a veteran team since 2014, 
You should definitely go check it out if you need a mobile wallet. You can find it at edge.app if you want to learn more about it or just look it up on the Google Play or Apple stores. It's really awesome. So, creepy dudes. I find it interesting that I can't sell Bitcoin and end up interacting with someone on Telegram without them hitting on me. Okay. Now, at this point, all they've seen about from me is my face pic, so it's not overly obvious that I'm trans or anything like that. But it's it's weird that I can't just engage in this business interaction with someone without them being creepy. I'm okay. What does creepy mean? That's a good question. I don't I don't know that I can honestly answer it. Everybody so, has a different definition. For me, the definition of creepy is uh, somebody who makes an unwanted sexual advance. Um, now, I don't use the term creepy in my life because I find it to be problematic. Uh, <laughs> right? I just don't. I, I think it's overused. It's meaningless. And it's a word that carries far more punch than its cost. And by that, what I mean is it's easy to call somebody creepy, but it hurts them when you do. It's not just unwanted sexual advances, though. It's without context sexual advances. Like someone hitting on me at a bar isn't creepy, but because, someone hitting because it's expected and that social because it's a bar event. You know, all right. But for you, it's do, not creepy, right? Some people it, just want to go to a bar to play pool. Why can't I just go play pool? They're they are unrealistic, right? <laughs> I'm not going to say they're unrealistic, but you should expect if you go out to a place where people are regularly hooding, hit, hooking up and hitting on each other that you could get hit on at some point. What if you don't Selling like Bitcoin bars? Selling Bitcoin online what if you is don't drastically like... different from that. Uh, I, I'm, I'm fine with that. Um, so what the if you... context is very important in what makes someone a creep and what doesn't. The context is, as they perceive it, you are female and they are male. There's your context. That's not a, And that's why they're creeps. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so... Um, a lot of people, a lot of people that have trouble dating say, I don't like going to bars. I don't drink or I don't, you know, like they don't want to go to bars and meet people. If you want to find somebody to hook up with, it can get difficult if you don't go where, if you don't fish where the fish are. Right. So, sure. So they go fishing out of the aquarium. I mean, what's well, the, they what they believe they break into a neighbor's home is that they're going they're at their friend's house. They is they're going their to aquarium. find somebody who is uh, interested in them and they're interested in in their daily life. Right? They're going to go through their daily life. Part of their daily life is apparently buying uh, Bitcoin Cash and communicating on Telegram. So th- they they've met you and they're ready to talk. Um, I have to say that the that until you've said I'm not interested, that no creepiness has occurred, to my mind. Well, creepiness as in like scariness, or creepiness as in creepiness. So this that's what this article gets into. Okay, is I, defining I, the term. I have a lot of experience. Maybe we should read the article first a bit before we get into this, but. Growing up on a horse farm that my dad owned, uh, you know, there was uh, many, many young girls started getting involved with the horses between 8 and 12 years old. And yep. they pretty much hung out there the whole time until they were, you know, and, and a lot of them, my little brother has a farm, and a lot of them now are going back to that. They're bringing their kids there to learn how to ride horses. So I got, I was the big brother for minimum 75 girls throughout my life. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have, I don't even know how many. I said, I can't really count it. But uh, so... A lot of these girls were like, oh, so-and-so creeped me out. You, you know, you got this guy helping you with, you know, something. They creeped me out or some boy at school creeped me out. Or So the thing is, is basically any, you know, a lot of the girls, it was just a fact that there's an intimidation factor by someone that they know that they cannot physically fight off because they're like a 55-pound, you know, 8-year-old girl or a you know, or a hundred pound, 13 year old girl, uh, and someone who's either their same age, generally a boy or an old or an older man generally is the creep. But also some of these girls, because the guy wasn't attractive, he's a creep, but the, the attractive guy could do the same exact stuff. And he wasn't a creep because he was, you know, attractive. Another wrinkle. In attractive this. or charismatic. 
Well, what difference does it make? Uh, it makes a huge attract- difference. Attractive, attractive is way more superficial. Attractive doesn't mean the way you look. Physically attractive does. So attractive is just a term about somebody that you... That's why I asked the question about whether he meant physically attractive. I didn't say physically, but right. whether he meant charismatic well, or attractive. I'll give you an example. So I got a friend from uh, from Massachusetts, um, and he doesn't see very well. He he uh, lost his license so probably four or five years ago because he just can't see. And uh, but for but he would like you know um, go up to somebody and get right in their face. And he'd have to be about you know a two foot from your face with his glasses on to really recognize who you are. And he would do this to random people around the farm. And these girls, I mean, and he's a sweet man, uh, and he's a very nice guy, and they would be really freaked out by him because he would just get in your face to look at you because he didn't know who you are. He couldn't see. And even after you explain this to the to, to him, to the girls, they would have to, like, interact with him and see him for a while to realize that he's not a threat. But, you know, a lot of people, especially, you know, like um, a lot of these kids are being programmed that, you know, everyone's a threat and you have... You know, they're just, and they're so hypersensitive to everything that they get creeped out so easy. Well, someone getting within two feet of you and staring at your face is a bit of an invasion of a personal space bubble. Sure. sure. So I can understand why someone would be intimidated by that happening. I, I'd like to add a twist to this. I worked at a gym at one point, and turns out lots of hookups happened there, too. And... uh I'm not going to – I don't know if I should have known this clue or not, but an attractive young lady came up to me, and she was sort of huffy and upset that somebody had asked for her telephone number at the gym. And um, I just kind of said, well, did he, did he do anything or say anything threatening? And uh, she's like, no. And I'm like, oh, there's not much I could do about that. And off she went. A, actually, a few, like a week or maybe so later, this young lady asked me to, uh, you know, to, out for dinner. She was making a like she was setting a situation up where I would be jealous. I don't know what she was doing, right? But it had to do with getting asked. She didn't know what she was doing either. It so what? Like. It doesn't make a difference because her calling that guy creepy. She did not that I, I don't recall her having used the term and presuming who I even I don't even know who he was. I, I didn't even go back and look. I mean, all I could see was no violation has occurred for here. Um, you don't want that kind of attention. Don't wear those hot pants. Um, you know, I, I mean, I just I didn't know what to do and didn't do anything. So it could be potentially I have to hold on. I, so, I have saying to, that somebody's creepy it could actually be a come on to the person that they're saying it to. So back to your your little offhanded statement there about how if she didn't want to be a come on to she shouldn't wear those hot pants or whatever. Yes. Um so women who wear short skirts and who get raped they shouldn't have worn that. That's where we always go, isn't it? Let me ask you another question. If I have a convertible going? and I put a giant bag of cash on the front seat and then I get up and I go in, uh, walk the main street and look in shops and I come back. Should I have a reasonable expectation that that giant bag of cash be sitting on my car? Do you want to you want me to tell you why that analogy doesn't hold up? I'd love to. It's because to. women haven't left their bodies behind anywhere. They are still, you know, uh, I'm only, I only asked a question. It's more I, like ripping the you, bag. You're calling of, it an analogy. I'm asking a question. It's more like because it's theft well, you asked to the take question that because bag. You meant to imply it's an analogy, but it's more like ripping the bag out of your arms. I hear what you're saying. Look, I don't think anybody should be raped. However, it's um, like closer advertisements. This is Free Talk Live, talk radio that you control. You can call in and talk about whatever is on your mind. That number is 855-450-3733. And with you tonight, it's Aria. Jay. And Mark. And during the break, I took the opportunity to look up the word creepy as it's actually defined in the dictionary, which is not like, which is not much help. Did you check the uh, Urban Dictionary? I did, and it okay. went into a little bit more detail, but it's also the Urban Dictionary, so it got a bit off topic Mm -hmm. to what people would really consider to be creepy the actual definition is a bit unhelpful causing an unpleasant feeling of fear or unease 
But there is no dispute here among us, I don't think, that a person who is being described a certain way is not necessarily at fault for how the other person is describing them. Right. Sure, they could attempt to scare the other person or whatever to be creepy or intimidating or whatever, but how someone else perceives them is really up to that someone else. Yeah. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, as they say. When I worked at, uh, when I was younger, I went, uh, b- b- below the age of 18, I worked at a comic book store. And into the comic book store, the, probably the first time, the first time I noticed this guy, he comes in, he's wearing a uh, denim cowboy hat with a bunch of hat pins in it. And he is, uh, he's got some kind of psoriasis on his hands, so he's crusty, uh, and his face, like sort of by the beard line and, and that sort of thing. And he's got long fingernails and... Uh, you could tell he's got male pattern baldness. He's probably in his 50s. And he, he talks in a really high, kind of breathy voice. Um, and this guy, and overweight, and a whole bunch of other things, right? As unattractive as unattractive could be. Yeah, that was the least flattering description of a person I've ever heard in my life, I mean, Mark. crusty <laughs> is the, the terminology I would describe him <laughs> And Poor guy. his name was John, I remember. I mean, you're not wrong, Jay. Poor guy is right. But Mark's right. description of him is still um And I was hilarious. probably 14 years old in meeting him. My um, my empathy the- muscles were not very uh, developed at that point. And, you know, there was another young person working at the comic book store. And I don't know if he knew that we were ch- chortling at him, but we were chortling. Okay. And um, just sort of made a big deal once he walks out of the, the comic book store. We're like, oh, my God. You know, like, uh, you know, young people would. Sure. And I mean, kids are cruel. Right. Uh, and we, we were cruel. And, uh, you know, later, the lady who owns the store explains, hey, look, there's nothing that John is doing that John can really control. Maybe the maybe the fingernails. Um, but. You know, I mean, John's got problems and what you're doing is cruel. I mean, I don't know what the, exactly the words were. You just said cruel and I um, and right. I would agree with the terminology. I was cruel as I could possibly be to you this were 14. guy. Right. And I, I forgive 14 year old me, but I learned from the experience and I went on. Right. So John never you know, came on to me or anything like that. But John definitely would have qualified as creepy with his, you know, Darth Vader rasp and uh, everything else that was going on with him. He probably didn't live much longer because he clearly was not in good health. But he liked comic books and he wanted some comic books and he would come in on a monthly basis and get his comic books. And I don't know, sometimes he'd come in with a keeper. I have no explanation, but perhaps the default should be empathy for the person as opposed to uh, just... I would agree when there are, like, medical issues at hand sure. and things like that. Uh, Everybody's got medical issues, though, right? I mean... Yeah, but not ones that cause them to be creepy. Well... Like, it leads off here with, from Uncle Joe Biden's hair smelling antics to uh, the... What's the guy's name? Trudeau? Justin Trudeau. Trudeau. Standing too close to a tennis star from the random dude who just slid into your direct messages to Zach Broff holding hands with a much younger actress, right? That's the examples they gave and it sort of goes from most severe to least severe from what i can tell uh creepy uncle joe there, there's no medical issue nope there's no medical reason that he's going around sniffing on you know seven-year-old girl's hair he's just <laughs> creepy <laughs> and you know you can be creepy and gritty, get away with it when you're an unaccountable government bureaucrat no, you know, any- I mean, Democrats still want to elect him. He's running around sniffing seven-year-old girl's hair in public. I don't know if you've seen it, I but honestly- go to JoeBiden.info if you have not. <laughs> so I know a bunch of uh, Democrats, and they don't like Joe Biden. They don't even like I know, Elizabeth but the numbers Warren. show that Democrats love him. I mean, well, he's the front runner. He, the, the establishment is pushing him. Yeah, yeah he's, he's the well, darling I mean- of the establishment left. You know, he's he's a clear, you know... I'm not saying man. polls are great indicators of how people really feel, but in general, I mean, they, they kind of are good indicators of how people feel. Right. I mean, if they're conducted accurately and not just made out of thin air, how do we even know the, the poll was even pulled? It could be just some nonsense. Well, how do we know cream. Joe Biden even exists? Well, because you know? we see him on TV sniffing you know, yeah, 12-year-old but, girl's hair. But deep fakes are a thing. There may be no such person as Joe Biden. I mean, if we're going to go down this solipsism rabbit hole, let's do it. 
Yeah, I mean, it's probably a big waste of time, but I, I don't trust the polls when they come from, especially the media that lies about everything else. You know, I mean, I trust my own polls because, you know, I ask people things. But then again, most of the people I talk to, you know, hate Republicans and Democrats equally. Yeah, good point. I'm looking at these pictures of Justin Trudeau <laughs> near this uh, next to this Bianca Andre Scu. Uh, uh, you know, full disclosure. I think I, she's I, being creepy. I wouldn't be able to pick. Uh, Justin Trudeau out of a lineup, um, and I'd never heard Bianca's name before. But you know, these pictures do look like a guy who's somewhat older hitting on a woman who's somewhat younger. I don't know whether Justin Trudeau's married. I don't know anything about Justin Trudeau. Um, but looks like she's enjoying it though in the pictures. It does. She's she does smiles. not seem to be too upset about it. In one case, she's kind of turned. Whatever uh, the situation is, I, I I don't know. But uh, I mean, you know, creepy. I guess that's up to you. Well, see, it's also not a fair assessment to say from the random dude who just slid into your DMs because that's not necessarily creepy. It can be creepy, oh, but it's all about second. context. Slid into your what? DMs. Direct messages. Oh, okay. I didn't catch, It's like just sorry. random guys messaging you out of the blue. Random guys message me all, out of the blue all the time. I don't think they, they usually want me the... to invest in some stupid thing. Yeah, see, they're oh, not yeah. messaging you in the same way they message me then. But does it make a difference, though? I mean, I mean it, it kind of does. You, you'll are, walk are you away in... from yours. I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm going to have, uh, I'm going to be that much poorer. I get a random Russian or Ukrainian uh, girl uh, you know, sending me a text message or um, So email. hold on, Mark. I think we need some perspective. Have you ever gotten a call from someone in India via Facebook Messenger at 4 o'clock in the morning? I have never gotten a call um, from India from some uh, – no. no. The answer to that question is no. I okay. have. Because have you? Yeah. Uh, it, was must- it wasn't from in- India. It was from Sierra Leone, Mustafa. He, he oh, okay. Got called, well, but, okay. That's different. You know, but <laughs> – he just we wanted me to him. donate to something. He's but. not a stranger, right? He didn't mention stranger, but either way, it's still not okay. true. Because <laughs> that's the kind. It doesn't happen regularly, but it does happen. And you know, for the 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 actually attractive girls out there, the cis girls and whatever, however you wish to describe them, they deal with this crap on at least a weekly basis. Well, I got to say, my wife has never dealt with this stuff. Um, she says that the problem with. Um, you know, people having disliking Facebook for all these reasons is they didn't curate their Facebook uh, friend list very well. And well, you don't have to be friends with them to call them. Apparently, really, that's, that's been my experience. Yeah, well, what can I tell? I you? never answer these calls, so I don't know. I usually just block them or just say nothing back when they randomly message me, and at some point they just get bored and block me. But yeah, that's very different for someone just they block somebody who didn't talk to them. And then you have the guy who they made the entire slideshow about who lives relatively nearby here in Keene uh-huh. for creeping on girls. So somebody, I never got to see the slideshow. You should check it out. It's entertaining. All right. Yeah. So someone just randomly remember, messaging you and saying hi is very different from someone being creepy in your DMs. All right. So random hi is not creepy, but beyond that creepy? Well, not necessarily. I mean, it's all about context and what they say. I mean, if they just randomly send you a penis of their uh, a picture. A picture of their genitalia, yeah, yeah, that's creepy, right? But if they just say, hello, would you like to go out to dinner sometime? That's not creepy. I, I had a girl that was really hot for me that I was not interested in, and she was like, I'll sh-, she's sending me boob pics. She's like, send me D pics, send me D pics. So like my dog at the time was like scratching himself and he's all like bent around and his little red rock is like hanging out. So I sent him a picture of that. Never heard from her again. (laughs) That was probably the safe approach and the sensible approach. So getting on with this, uh, the article I'm assuming was written by a dude says it's a strange development. Why are we calling so many people, usually men, creepy? Well, despite the prevalence of the creepiness discourse, real research into the nature of creepiness is pretty new. It suggests that creepiness is related to disgust, which is an ad- which is an adaptive emotional response that helps to maintain a physical barrier between our bodies and potentially injurious external substances. It's a place to start, sure. Yeah, let's get further into this, though. Are men creepy? Do you think men are creepy or at least can be creepy 855-450-3733 what about creepy uncle joe let us know your thoughts on him 855-450-3733 are you sick of hearing the same crap on libertarian podcasts inside jokes interviews of the same person you've heard 50 times then you need to listen to the lava flow podcast 
no nonsense and to the point. Get the information you need and get out. You won't hear the latest libertarian circle jerk news here, but instead hard-hitting anti-statist news with me, Roger Paxton, shooting from the lip. LAVA stands for Libertarian, Anarcho-Capitalist, Voluntarist, and Agorist. And if you think you fit any of these categories, then this is the podcast for you. Listen now at thelavaflow.com to find out what's rustling my jimmies, what's in the news, the latest bad cop, stupid stuff statists are saying, and so much more. You can find out more and subscribe on any podcatcher at thelavaflow.com. That's thelavaflow.com. Part of the Pax Libertas Productions Podcast Network. Free Talk Live. This is Free Talk Live, talk radio that you control. You can call in and talk about whatever is on your mind. That number is 855-450-3733. And with you tonight, it's Aria. Jay. And Mark. And we're discussing creepy men. Um, I'm sure there are plenty of people out there who would describe me as a creepy man. I've encountered them, in fact. Okay. Uh, Largely on the internet. But um, it's all a matter of perspective, as we were talking about before. So what exactly is a creepy man? person i don't want to say creepy man because i in theory i guess women could be creepy too but have either of you ever been creeped out by a woman yes well okay so i have uh felt threatened but not like sort of physically threatened just sort of my way of being is going to be altered here if i don't get out of this situation um you know like perhaps she doesn't understand boundaries um, in the in a sort See, that's of what I would characterize classical as sense. Creepiness is that the person exhibits well, some sort of behavior or just puts off a vibe that they won't respect one's boundaries. So you can define it as creepy if, if you wish. I kind of reserve creepy as feeling physically threatened also. Now, I feel like a lot of people in this world, probably a lot of women, uh, are a little hyper vigilant when it comes to because I mean honestly they women have to live in a world where they're walking around and every other person is you know dominating physically dominating to them. I don't live in that world. I live in a world where very few of the people in it are physically dominating to me. Um, you know, like there's just not that many of them uh, that sure. that can you know with my with being six foot tall. Knowing jujitsu, being able to to fight, uh, you know, being two hundred pounds, all these things kind of come together. Where I don't walk around being physically scared. Sometimes I am. Every once in a while, I'll run across some guy that is a, you know, terrifying guy who's drunk and you know a few things like that. And then yeah, I mean, but that's you know that's just physically threatened. Now you seem to be using a uh, creep or creepy as a synonym for scary or intimidating. All right, so I think that, um, yeah, I think so. I think you've, a person's got to appear as though there's some kind of threat, right? They're interested in you as opposed to... See, I find them to be mutually exclusive, Okay, uh, at least for, in, in broad strokes, I would say. I don't know if I would want to say they're always mutually exclusive, but I would say that a creepy person is creepy because they want to do a thing. Or because their behavior suggests they would want to do a thing, while an intimidating or scary person is someone who would do a thing, right? So a creepy person is the one who sends you the messages about violating you, and the scary person is the one who actually makes the plan to violate you. All right. But some people, when they get a message saying, you know, from some dude who's like, hey, little girl, I'm going to do whatever to you, that scares the hell out of them. Yeah, you know, especially when because you know. I would say they're degrees of the same behavior is how I would actually put it. Not that they're mutually exclusive, but creepy is the the last step before you get to legitimately scary is how I think I would right. define it. But let's see what the article has to say. Biologically being grossed out by, for example, the idea of ingesting feces makes sense. Right. That's what. Why would they that's go dis- to that example? Though? That's disgusting. Well, they're yes. they're trying to show what disgusting is. It keeps us from getting ill. That's disgusting. Yes. 
So feeling creeped out by a person or a social situation, however, is less straightforward. Creepiness is different from disgust in that it refers to a feeling of unease in the face of social liminality, particularly where sex and death are involved. We become uncomfortable when events don't easily fit our expectations or when they transgress social rules. In a 2016 study, the psychologist Francis McAndrew and some other person at Knox College concluded that creepiness is anxiety aroused by the ambiguity of whether there is something to fear or not. Okay. And by the ambiguity of the precise nature of the threat. Of what is, yeah, so so creepiness is a feeling of uh, of not knowing what's yes. going on. Okay. Emotionally, creepiness helps us externalize our... So, inter- okay. Well, a lot of people, a lot of women describe creepiness as some guy coming on to them one time and they're unwelcome, right? I, I don't I don't know that it's fair to say that... I'm not saying it's fair. As in fact, I'm not, I would make the case that it is not. No, I don't think it's fair to say that women say that. Okay. Maybe some women, sure. I, I said some people... A lot of them women. Okay. If I didn't say that, as was what my uh, I was attempting. You, you, to, may, uh, you may have in fact said those. Exact I think words. most people who use the term creepy tend to be women, and that is now trickling down in the nomenclature. My big problem with creepy is the term is that it is undefined, unregulated, and basically it costs people nothing to say it, but is extraordinarily expensive if it's said about you. There's a broad spectrum when it comes to the term creepy, best I can tell. Indeed. It's, it, but there's, there's really no good definition for it. So feeling creeped out justifies our dis- – well, they, get, they just gave us a pretty good definition of it. It's anxiety aroused by the ambiguity of whether or not there is something to fear. And, oh, so like when a cop comes behind you and starts tailgating you? Oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's creepy. Right. Right? That's terrifying is what that is. Yes. Oh. And or by well, it's ambiguous and the creepy factor comes in because you don't know whether or not they're going to pull you over. Right. I mean, they, if they don't have their lights on. Yeah. I mean, they, they're going to in my experience. I mean, once they start tailgating you. Oh, yeah. You've been marked. Oh, and I'm ready for it. Cell 411 <laughs> just got to push the button. <laughs> Feeling creeped out justifies our decision to shut down rather than undertake the task of analyzing ambiguously threatening situations. It is a form of cognitive paralysis indicating that we are unsure how to proceed. I don't think that's entirely true. Uh, I've seen lots of people, uh, women in particular, extract themselves from creepy situations and from creepy men. Maybe they don't mean cognitive paralysis, meaning you can't do anything. I don't know why they would choose that term, but they just, I, just I feel like either. you can't think. But I mean, it's it's not... If somebody is creeped out and they're having this emotional response to a situation or to mm-hmm. a person, you can't really expect them in that moment to analyze the situation to determine whether or not they're in danger. I mean, humans are designed not to stand there going, I think this right. vehicle flying toward me at 50 miles per hour may not actually hit me. I'm going to analyze this situation to determine whether or not I'm actually in danger. And I think that's the human nature aspect of it. Yeah. And that's one of the things that it... I just don't know how to address it and go any further is because you're dealing with people who, like I said, women um, have every right to feel threatened and um, well, creepiness, uh, they're determining whether they feel threatened or not. Yes. And they're creepy and they use the label of creepy for anyone who can create that ambiguous. I've never made a woman feel threatened. You know, I'm, I'm pretty that you're sure aware of. Right. I'm sure I have. Made her feel threatened like you were going to do her harm? Yeah. Just by being who I am, sure. I know I did. I, I had But a... you didn't cause that. I mean, she caused that. All right. I, I, by what I mean is you never implied that you would harm a woman, not, right? Not um, you know, like, intentionally oh, no, or gonna, knowingly. You're going to go out to the bar with me, and we're going to get some drinks, and we're going back to your place, or I'm just going to take you to my place and beat you to death. Not right? intentionally or knowingly, that. no. Right. But I c- certainly could have said something to somebody whom, you know, not coming to the top of my head right now, that they thought interpreted as, uh, you know, threatening. Okay, fair point. Right. Like, the thing is, is that uh, come-ons, <laughs> you know, when, when, you're the, when you're the gender... 
Or what, what am I supposed to say? Sex? I'm not sure. Um, when you're the person that's supposed to make the come on, not the person who's supposed to receive the come on, you know, you've got to come up with something on the spot. Sometimes when you come up with that thing, it could sound threatening. It could sound lame. It could sound a whole variety of things. Sure. There, There's a, a free stater who is going around telling people that I've threatened her with violence. And uh, the people she's told it to have reported to me, and they've laughed about it. I mean, her credibility is pretty poor within the Free State Project and then people who know her. But I don't know where this happened. Maybe she'll call in. She knows who she is. I doubt she's listening, though. Well, have you ever been creeped out by Jay or by anyone else? <laughs> Give us a call. Let us know. That number is 855-450-3733. Again, it's 855-450-FREE, as in Free Talk Live. This is Free Talk Live, talk radio that you control. You can call in and talk about whatever is on your mind using our toll-free number. That's 855-450-3733. And with you tonight, it's Aria. Jay. And Mark. Do you want more businesses accepting Bitcoin Cash and Dash? Well, now with AnyPay, you can earn passive income for every purchase at those businesses. So finally, a financial incentive to spread Bitcoin Cash and Dash. You made it happen So you receive the rewards. Download the AnyPay cash register app and add your cryptocurrency wallet addresses. Then install it at a real life business. Talk to the owners, get them to accept cryptocurrency and all of that. And tell them that you did so at AnyPayInc.com. Again, that's AnyPayInc.com because AnyPay is going to pay ongoing commissions for signing up businesses to accept Bitcoin Cash and Dash. Every sale... You get this commission. So it's instant. There is no waiting for weeks or months or whatever for your payout. It works with both Bitcoin Cash and Dash. Again, check it out at anypayinc.com. So we've been talking about creepiness and what is and isn't creepy. Before we go on, I'd like to say that the AnyPay app is now back in the uh, the Play Store uh, for Android named AnyPay cash register um there were some problems with naming and logos and there were some other things out there chinese knockoffs or whatever that were looking very similar not so much now any pay cash register okay awesome thanks yeah thank you so conventional wisdom tells us to trust our gut but researchers say that our gut is concerned more with regulating the boundaries of social mores than keeping us safe right i don't know if I can agree with that or not. I w- I really have to look more into this study that they're about to refer to. Yeah, who are they studying? I mean, if if trusting your gut doesn't keep you safe, that's kind of an evolutionary problem. And on you know the average scale over eons, it will solve itself. Well, um, I mean, you can be safe and still be marginalizing somebody for behavior that is just a violation of a of a more. Right. I guess, but um, I guess sociologically speaking, the reason those mores exist is to not cause creepiness. Right. The reason it's wrong well, to it's, walk up to someone. It's against a more for you to walk around, frankly. I mean, you know, here you are, <laughs> what, six foot two um, and bright red hair uh, in a skirt and sexually ambiguous. Right. Sure. Does that sound right? Um, I'm not trying to be mean here. Um, so, you know, I mean, there are lots of people that are just, they're offended by you walking into the grocery store. Yeah. Right? Screw them. Well, I, I'm with you. <laughs> like, you gotta, you gotta be you. I gotta be me. Right? Whatever that is, it's, that, that's not me. But right. just because it's not me doesn't mean it's not you and you do you. I'm just here to get a, a, a shrimp ring, right? You know, like, I don't care. Right. So, um, you know, that's uh, – I, no, I, I don't like mores because people use them as ways to marginalize people quickly, easily, I I and agree, effectively. But the, the purpose of the creepiness and the gut feeling and the intimidation factor, the, the fight-or-flight response, the fear, all of that is because some group of people, some – percentage of a certain group of people 
tend to exhibit characteristics or behavior that is threatening or intimidating, whether they mean to or not. I think I creeped a girl out, two girls out actually last night. Really? Uh, I was um, going to uh, plow a driveway and there's this little parking area, like kind of a community, like, you know, park and ride thing. It's just a dirt parking lot at an intersection in Ware, New Hampshire. And a girl had her car parked there, not good tires on it. And the snow was really heavy. I mean, it was, you know, sleet, rain, snow, sleet, rain for yeah. like two days. And so the snowbank was pushed like right up against the front of her car as a guy plowed this parking lot and she just couldn't get out. So I'm driving by and I got a, uh, I open carry pretty much every time I go into Manchester and work, I carry either open or concealed uh, because it's, you know, there's crackheads. Yeah. And when you open carry and crackheads walk down the street, they go to the other side of the street. Uh, and so it's pretty convenient. You, you know, I don't have to, you know, when I'm working there. So I have my gun, uh, it's the drop leg, and I get out of the truck and I grab my shovel and I walk over and they just look at me and they look at the gun and they all take like three steps back. And I go, well, you maybe guys- they were crackheads. No, no. These, <laughs> these, these, these were young, two young teenage girls and a boy. Uh-huh. And there was one. They had dropped one. Uh, one car was there. They had dropped off one of the girls to get her car because they had carpooled somewhere. And I'm like, "Hey, it's New Hampshire. You need to carry a shovel in your car with you. Just get a little camping shovel at Walmart for five bucks." And I shoveled the car out and uh, and I helped him out. And uh, you know, they're all happy. And, and the girl goes, "You having that gun scared me, but you seem like a nice man." And I go, "You should. Uh, you should leave the city sometime." Well, this wasn't in the city. This was in Ware, New Hampshire. Really? Yeah, this is out in the woods. And I said, well, you should Google, um, you know, Texas Well, even so, man. you didn't creep her out. The the gun did. Yeah, and I And that's probably so. because of a lifetime of watching media that caused her to be creeped out by, you know, guns. Right. So I told her about this shooting in Texas where, you know, some bad guy walked into a place to go do what would probably do a mass shooting. And because there was a man there with a gun uh, that was a good guy. They stopped him, and she's like, oh, I didn't hear about that. I'm like, yeah, check it out. And uh, But uh, I was just thinking about that, because I, I knew I creeped out somebody recently. When did this happen? See, Mark, the difference, I think, with me going into a grocery store is that no one can rightly make the accusation that my presence in a skirt being 6'2 with bright red hair is threatening or intimidating. I don't think they're threatening or intimidating, no. I was talking about violations of mores. Okay. Mores yeah. as in but short you... for morals? Yeah. Okay. Well... Yeah, I mean, it's pretty loose um, in, in norms and mores, and I don't know the difference between them. Probably is more of a violation of a norm than it is of a more, but, um, you know, then again, so is creepiness. So in a 2017 Canadian study, female undergraduates were shown images of Caucasian male faces from three groups. Emotionally neutral faces taken from an image bank, image, images judged to be creepy in a pilot study, and images of criminals from America's Most Wanted. They were then asked to rate the faces according to creepiness, trustworthiness, and attractiveness. Across all three groups, there was a strong correlation between faces that participants considered trustworthy and attractive, and in some instances, general attractiveness was negatively correlated with judgments of creepiness. So the more attractive a person was, to go back the to less what creepy you were they saying, were. the less creepy they and were. And more trustworthy they were. Yes, which isn't altogether surprising, but the, this study itself, I don't know how indicative it really is of how people behave because it's, you're just, most people don't browse faces on the internet and go, oh yeah, I would totally marry this person and spend my life with them. Just look at their face. They're so trustworthy. Yeah. Right? That's well, a really superficial assessment. I have to agree with it. And it's because I, I believe myself to hold this particular privilege, the privilege of being attractive. Now, I don't, I don't use that term too often. I believe privilege should be reserved for uh, people who are, you know, basically attractiveness, intelligence, and wealth. Uh, but those are the only real uh, privileges out there. But uh, I consider myself to be attractive, and I haven't done so bad. I've, I've collected some evidence, right? At some point... I don't know many people who don't consider themselves attractive. How though. many of them are convicted murderers? I, I don't know. The, not many. So I, I would say that most convicted murderers, however, do believe themselves to be attractive. 
I, I would say that most men, the next generation wallet is coming from Divi. In just a few taps, you'll be able to send, earn, spend, and exchange digital money in seconds. Send money around the globe with only a swipe. Instantly exchange between Divi, Bitcoin, and Fiat right in the mobile app and withdraw directly to your bank account. Divi already offers the first one-tap solution for earning passive income with crypto. Multi-tiered masternodes allow everyone to partake in the network. Visit DiviProject.org. DiviProject.org. This is Free Talk Live, talk radio that you control. You can call in and talk about whatever is on your mind. That number is 855-450-3733. And with you tonight, it's Aria. Jay. And Mark. LibertyCon is a unique Liberty Convention, April the 3rd through the 5th in Washington, D.C. for people who want to network with more than 70 pro-Liberty organizations for the purpose of career advancement or business and internship opportunities. You'll hear from a list of incredible speakers like... John Mackey, the CEO of Whole Foods and co-founder of it, who will speak on conscious capitalism. Vernon Smith, who has a Nobel Prize in economics and is going to speak on alternative markets. Miriam Issa, pop culture expert. Uh, Nassim Taleb, who spent 21 years as a risk taker. There's so much more. Visit LibertyCon.com for more details on additional speakers and events and use code FTL for a $10 discount on your registration. Again, that's LibertyCon.com. Student travel scholarships are available and discount rooms for everyone at the Marriott Marquis. Save with early registration at LibertyCon.com. Now, there's a bunch of creepy people in Washington, D.C., for sure, working in the Senate building, whatever they call it. All of them. I mean, the District of Criminals should be called District of Creeps, actually, I think. I mean, that is where they have Joe Biden and Donald Trump, who said that he didn't say he was willing to have sex with someone who was his daughter, but he did essentially admit that he was sexually attracted to his daughter. Well, I mean, He's, if he, if she wasn't my daughter, I think is what the, the statement yeah, was. I mean, yeah, something along those lines. Well, if she wasn't my sister, if she wasn't, I've heard a lot of people say she wasn't my cousin, you know, all kind of stuff like that. And he's just... Yeah, but daughter... That's a bit different, I, I would say. There's a lot more reasons to pick on Trump than saying that, like... He has ordered that a lot of people just die in the Middle East. I mean, certainly, but we're talking about creepiness. And as far as creepy behavior goes, being willing to just uttering the statement, if she wasn't my daughter. All right. So I I get that there was a I can't remember what the singer was, but some singer some time ago's father said something like, you know, she's got C cups. Of course, she's hot or something like that. Right. And it seems like like Miley Cyrus. Uh, I, think was, I think it was uh, previous to that. Okay. Uh, she was tall and blonde. I, I, I'm not very good at, with uh, my, my entertainment um, uh, trivia. So, I, I mean, I think it's a difficult – I'll never have to be in this situation, right? I've got a young son, so I don't know what this is like. But, you know, what it must be like for the father of an attractive woman. And obviously somebody's going to ask you questions because these entertainment reporters have nothing better to do than chase everybody around. And um, I mean, you know, I don't think Trump necessarily volunteered this stuff, but I mean, you know, I it don't know. A stupid I, response. It Right. It's a it's a flippant response that gets made a big deal of because, well, everything that Trump says is a big deal now. And it's one of the only things they could pick on him about because they won't pick on him about. He's legit certainly things. a lecher. Um, I mean, you know, no doubt he's sure. been through plenty. But you know, turns out powerful men throughout history have been, huh? A little more likely that lechers are uh, willing to move up the power structure. So, getting back to this Canadian study, evidently the faces that were taken from America's Most Wanted were not rated as significantly more creepy than the neutral group. Which is pretty much exactly what I would expect. Do, do they think that there is some facial recognition software built into the human brain when we can look at someone and say, oh, yeah, that guy's probably a criminal, right? Because that's what they seem to be implying that they expected. Well, I do think we have that, um, that we are highly developed for determining who the other is. So we're a small group 
primate, uh, you know, for whatever that means. Science has determined humans are a small group primate. You can detie, you can get all, all upset about that if you want. Um, so, right, that's small group. The, so everybody who's not in the group is out of the group. They are an other. And, yeah, we can tell by sort of smell and uh, look and these sorts of things, who's in the in-group and who's out of the in-group, whatever our particular in-group is. And so, I mean, are we good at se- telling whether a person is bad or not? No. But we are good at telling whether or not they're part of our group or not part of our group, whatever group we've created for ourselves. Sure. But they seem to be— uh- And everybody who's not in our group is bad by default if you're a small group primate because bands of small group primates war or battled all the time Uh, they'd come and they'd steal each other's women their resources and these kind of things so yes i would say that uh that you know that we 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 are highly developed in this area i personally think of it the opposite way well what they're suggesting is that they expected the women to look at the pictures of the men from america's most wanted and rate them as significantly more creepy than just random other pictures of men Right. And that's very different from detecting otherness or whatever, because one of those criminals yes. can be in your in group whether right. they're a criminal or not. Right. But and the- you will make every excuse in the world for somebody who's in your in group who's caught uh, doing something bad. Um, and so. Happens all the time. I'm not saying bad as in a moral equivalency to bad. I'm talking about bad in your mind as bad. Okay. So a bad as in a, a moral perception. equivalency. Yeah. Well, um, what I'm saying is, is that. Humans aren't necessarily good at looking at people and determining whether somebody is uh, evil, but they are good at determining whether somebody is in or out of their particular social group. And anybody who's out of their social group is, to their mind, before they've been tested, bad. Okay. And dangerous. So my social group, uh, well, or my business group for years was people in the horse business. And my observation, and I worked with a lot of women, and my observation uh, throughout life has pretty much been, um, especially these really good looking horse women, and I'm saying horse women because you know it's the industry I was in. Um, they uh, are well are a lot more likely to take advantage of a guy for some financial gain or whatever than some like not attractive horse women. Now, do men have a term for women who do that? Because I mean, the gold the, digger. I'm talking more like uh, I'm going to show up, and you know, this one particular pretty hot blonde that I used to sell a lot of hay to uh-huh. was always just really difficult to get paid from, and a lot, and always had like you know some reason, and like you know whatever. She was just always difficult. And then a few other people, I, uh, women I dealt with that were very attractive. It seems like the most attractive ones were generally the most difficult to deal with because. Well, they've just been able to get away with it. Just Just doors will open. Difficult a a lot. And and it actually got to the point to where, like, I'm like, like, I I show up one lady, this brand new customer, and she's like a 10. She's hot. And I'm like, oh, man, she's going to (laughs) be, this is going to be difficult. I almost, I almost wanted to just leave, but actually she she was, she was fine. There was no issues. Um, Great customer. And I, I can remember, like, just and then there was these other women that were you know like one of my guys helped me oh she's she's about as good looking as ditch water he says to me and i go she's a good lady she always pays she's super honest there's there, there's no bs and but like definitely i, I kind of got a little prejudice against you know these really hot horse broads because they be, they were difficult most times they were difficult now, the only kind of person I've ever seen just, like, jump to the front of a line at a bar is a insanely attractive woman. I've, I've never seen a man do that. I've only ever seen insanely hot women do it. And it goes back to what you were saying, which is why I wondered whether or not you had a term for it. For the, these types spoiled. of entitled spoiled. There we go. Spoiled is to women as creepy is to men. All right. I I'm suppose. not going to argue with you. Yeah, I don't know of too many men who can be fairly described as spoiled, nor too many women who can be fairly described as creepy. 
but it goes the other way in alarming quantities. Well, so, I would, uh, you know, my, my first caveat would be that the, the vast majority of women are do not fit in this category for me. Um, well, the that vast they, majority of men are also not creepy. I don't know. I think that a lot of men have been called <laughs> creepy. <laughs> Even if they're not meaning to be creepy, uh, creepiness, you know, works its way out there for some girls. Just, so creepiness just kind of creeps in? Yeah, creeps in. More about this. Unkempt and dirty men, evidently, and men with abnormal facial facial features were more likely to be rated creepy. So it does sound like a just physical attractiveness thing. 855-450-3733. 855-450-FREE, as in Free Talk Live. This is Free Talk Live, talk radio that you control. You can call in and talk about whatever is on your mind. That number is 855-450-3733. And with you tonight, it's Aria. Jay. And Mark. And the next generation wallet is coming from Divi. In just a few taps, you'll be able to spend, earn, store, and exchange digital money in seconds. Divi says you'll be able to send money around the globe in only a swipe and instantly exchange between Divi, Bitcoin, and Fiat right in the mobile app. And withdraw it directly to your bank account. There's no need to wait, though, as Divi already offers the first one-tap solution for earning passive income with their multi-tiered masternodes that allow anyone to earn by supporting the Divi network. When the new wallet launches, because of Divi's relationship with Western Union, Divi will be available in more than 200 countries, including the United States. You can learn more at DiviProject.org. That's D-I-V-I Project dot org. Now, we've been talking about creepy people, creepy behavior in general. But before we get further into the article, let's go to the phones. We've got Lumpy calling Lumpy. You're on Free Talk Live. Good evening, you three. I hope you're all doing well in this Happy New Year to you all. Um, And I'm sorry to go off topic, but I do believe before I go off topic, I think James from Arizona is about the creepiest person I think I've ever heard in my life. But anyway, um, so I've, I've got a problem and I'm hoping that the three of you and, and, and I'm probably going to get an answer from Jay on this because I, I bet you Jay has got the brains on this one the most. Not that you all don't have other brains. You guys are all brilliant. I appreciate you very much. But I've got a friend who, who tells me, uh, you know, Trump is such a great guy. He's, t- he's gotten rid of the second central bank. He's going to get rid of the Fed. And I'm like... And I, you know, and I'm thinking. I go to this thing in my head where, oh yeah, this is the 4D chess thing. You know, I don't believe in in Trump, Clinton, Obama. I don't believe in any of these presidential people. I think all politicians are creepy, with the exception of one guy ever, who was Ron Paul, uh, maybe Mike Gravel at that point in time. But you know, he had a, some lessons to learn, and nobody knows who the heck he is. But uh, anyway, you know, maybe I'm out of touch on this. But what is it that makes people think? That this guy who's filed bankruptcy, I don't know how many times, has ripped off more people than you can ever imagine to get to where he is financially. How can you possibly think that Trump gives one piece of any care about any of you people? These people seek power. There's an old Henry Ford quote that's uh, I'm going to maybe I'm going to botch it, but it's something like this. We see the world as we are, not as it is. And when I heard that, that kind of was life changing for me because I see these people as power seeking hungry now and i can understand it because that's not what i am and that's what any not what any of you are um you know what is it that makes people defy logic and reason and believe in these leaders and think that somebody like trump is going to actually care about them is it this i don't know if it's this greater good image i don't know what it is and how do i talk to these people i feel like i'm out of words i'm like i I just get so stunned that they can even believe this and these are people i respect and and who exercise all kinds of caution but you know they're very reasonable people and then all of a sudden this is completely unreasonable they think he's going to do something good for them how can they possibly say this anyway anyway that's about it why do people worship trump well uh, I would say it's a, well, why do they wor- the same reason that a bunch of people worshipped Obama? Um, you know, I, I would uh, 
first off, 15,000 hours of, uh, you know, school indoctrination, brainwashing. Uh, it doesn't help us just fluoride in the water and, you know, all kinds of other things kind of dumbing you down. And yeah, but, Jay, we say that to these people and they look at us like we're, we got six heads. Oh, yeah, they don't right. You, you are right. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, there are people that are such diehard Republicans that if Adolf Hitler was reincarnated and won the Republican nomination, I mean, they would get swastika tattoos immediately uh, because they are just such diehard Republicans. And then you got people who are such diehard Democrats, same exact thing. I know. Well, a, wasn't a whole bunch wasn't of the them. Nazi movement? Wasn't that actually a left movement anyway? Yeah. Depends on who you're. Uh, you know, I yeah, mean, it doesn't national matter. Socialist. Left and right. Yeah, left and right is just a bunch of people who are divided and conquered, as I see. But yes, yeah, the, their own, their own psychologically, their own philosophically, their own mentally, their own. I mean, your question many, ultimately many is: yeah. How do you convince a delusional, insane person that they yes. are delusional and insane? Yes, and how do I convince somebody? He's going to get rid of the Federal Reserve? Are you kidding me? He's he's a populist. He's well, saying the these things because he's a salesman. Facts don't matter yeah. to them. I mean, they're delusional. They believe what they're going to believe, regardless of the facts you put out in yes, front of them. But, yes, but facts have to matter to these people. They're important, <laughs> you know. But anyway, maybe well, it's not mattering to me right now. I yes, think that um, you know, so people see the benefit, whatever the benefit they perceive of having their particular politician win, and in order to get you to perceive the. Uh, the benefits they're going to try to say things that get you to you know like their guy so that their guy is going to win whomever their guy might be they'll say whatever it takes and it's you can watch it on the campaign trail over and over again i mean it just keeps happening um and i what all i'd say is is that you know this all comes back from the lineage of the the state being an organization that claims a monopoly privilege and the use of violence a given landmass. I mean, the the state originally was just a bunch of robbers that didn't feel like traveling around and getting chased, so they stayed in one spot and began to extract stuff uh, from people by protecting them from the other robbers. Yeah, and you know they've developed all kinds of way. systems. Yeah, the the most like looking resilient. like dad basically. Yeah, um, the most resilient was the religious system. We're like, yeah. we're doing this for your own benefit. Oh, and by the way, we're omnipotent and benevolent. I don't want your benefits. That's what I told the state. And you know, for Trump, for example, like before, even when Trump was going to run for president, my problem with Trump is is I knew uh, I had a customer that owned property in New Jersey. That was a horse stable that actually got uh, took in in eminent domain for a parking lot for one of Trump's buildings. Oh, uh, that's she lost her horse stable, and so I'm assuming she was not a Trump supporter at this point. No, no, and this happened like, and actually, she was a good friend of my dad's. I was a little kid when this happened. This whole like stealing the property, but you know, he was using f- the force and violence of government w- when he was in the private sector. Oh yeah, he always has been. Just through eminent domain, I mean, you know, and and like, let's even say we th- we're a constitutionalist and eminent domain's okay. We're not talking about like power lines or a road or something for the public good. This right. was a parking lot for one of public his use versus buildings. public good. So you d- like they can say whatever they want that is the public good, but in fact, for the public use is very specific. So power lines, public use. Uh, you know, city parking lot, but public use. But would it not use. be better for the power company to pay you for your land? Well, they in imminent domain, they pay you. They pay you whatever they think is the going rate. Yeah, what but would I mean, be better, if you don't want to sell, let me put it that what way. What would be better is that if it's so important that the government take the land, uh, you know, first, some states have passed laws that says they just can't. You just can't do um, imminent domain or whatever. But here's the best way, I think. If it's so important... Pay double the uh, assessed rate. Go, you know, double the rate of the evaluation by an independent uh, third party uh, evaluator. Pay double that rate, and if th- then determine whether or not you need that land, because then you're going to deal with people who are a little, little bit more like. Well, I'm glad they took my land. See, I don't even know about that. I think it would be up to the person who owns the land sure. to state their value. Agreed. But if you believe that eminent domain is necessary, okay. I don't believe it's necessary. In fact, auction no, it's theory. it's immoral. 
uh, auction theory uh, preempts it. Well, I'm, I'm not talking about immoral. I'm talking about necessary. Auction theory preempts it. So, Well, nothing immoral is necessary. Uh, that, that's okay. We can have that conversation. <laughs> there are two lines. There, you know, there's point A and point B. Okay. You can draw three lines between point A and point B, the straight line, and then two lines that are, are close to straight but go through other properties. Um, is all you do is take lines A, B, and C, make offers to everybody who's along those lines. I'm presuming you're putting in a, a road, right? Okay. And say to each of those people, look, here's the offer on your property. You can sell. Um, we're making an offer, but the offer is contingent on everybody along A, B, or C selling. And you know, at that point, you have you know bidding and auction, the whole thing. You're not going to have people necessarily wanting to – you know, the people that don't want to sell don't have to. But somebody along lines B and C may very well do it. At that point, you're fine. So, so what about in the scenario where everybody along point A wants to sell except one person? Then it doesn't sell. I mean, I guess they can put See, some pressure on them, but that's about the whole it. Point I don't even this. think they should use pressure. I think they should be like, okay, well, all of your all, your, all of your other neighbors agreed to this, and now you've changed your mind. Okay, that's your right. We don't agree, but that's your right. So we'll pay you a million dollars over asking price or whatever, you know? Well, then everybody Those else is going to want a million dollar over ask, asking well, price. They should have stuck out. Well, then they're going to feel cheated and they're going to go to the news and talk. Good point. 855 <laughs> Talking about eminent domain. This is Free Talk Live. Balance of nature. Changing the world one life at a time. Scientific research has shown that many cancers and lifestyle diseases can be prevented with a diet rich in fruits and vegetables. This prevention comes from the phytochemicals in the plants. They fight against oxidants that damage the cell's DNA, causing mutations that lead to disease. In my lab, I've seen the immune response increase, I've seen your DNA repair capacity increase, and I've seen DNA protection. As a scientist, I know the balance of nature works. Experience the balance of nature difference for yourself. Call or go online now and become a preferred customer, which gives you our best pricing and free shipping. And we will take an additional 35% off of your first order. This will be a limited time offer, so don't wait. Call 800-2468-751. That's 800 800- Two four six eight seven five one, or go to balanceofnature.com and use discount code FTL. Free Talk Live. This is Free Talk Live, talk radio that you control. You can call in and talk about whatever is on your mind. That toll-free number is 855-450-3733. And with you tonight, it's Aria. Jay. Oh, sorry, Jay. There we go. Jay. (laughs) And Mark. And uh, we've been talking about what is and isn't creepy. But before we get into that, we've had him sitting here for a few minutes. Uh, Gene, you're on Free Talk Live. Are you still with us? Ah, I'm so bad at my job at the yeah. moment. Okay. How, what's on your mind, Gene? Okay. I wanted to talk about uh, a story of two, uh, two compare two different stories. Uh, one is uh, a shooting that is stopped by private parties in a church. And the other one is a sh- uh, an armed chase of a UPS truck that ended in uh, uh, something like 200 rounds of ammo being fired and two innocent bystanders standers being killed. And this is, this is to show uh, as an example of the difference between when private people take uh, justice or vengeance in their hands and when Gene, I'm sorry, you're getting out. a lot of packet loss there. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, right. You're downloading the latest episode of uh, Mandalorian, or what's going on? No, actually, it's over my phone, but I'm going to stick it closer to the window here. Maybe that'll help. Yeah, it seems to have. So, okay. Yeah, so, I think that one uh, of the glaring differences between the church shooting in Texas, where the um, off-duty con- or the I'm sorry, the concealed carry permit holder goes and guns down a guy who just started shooting people at the church versus whatever the situation is where police officers are basically held unaccountable for their actions is is that had this CCW guy, the concealed carry permit holder guy, had he 
shot three people while he was attempting to kill this other person, he would be held responsible for that in some manner exactly. or another. And it's curious to me that the people that we expect to protect us, we hold to the least level of accountability. And I can't understand that to save my life. I just don't get how people can think that this is a good scenario for anybody. The expectation well, of the police to protect you is false, Mark. I agreed. According to the Supreme right. Court, even. But it's an expectation. Yeah, it's an expectation that's that's in put in the wrong place because uh, obviously it's clear that they don't care about the people. And at the sh- church shooting, and I watched that video several times, There, it was just pow, pow, and pow. That's how fast the three shots took place. Two of them came from the guy's shotgun. The third shot was from the uh, the security, and he took one shot, hit the guy, he hit the ground, and then everybody pulled their guns out, but yet there was no hail of gunfire. Everybody was uh, ready to shoot if they needed to, but everybody kept their fingers off the triggers, and they made sure the situation was secure, and it was one shot. To that guy. That's all. Now, if the police had been doing this, now, let me the- ask a question uh, because I didn't follow any of this at all. I mean, I was aware that it was a thing, but honestly, I get tired of the whole libertarians going on endlessly about how good guys with the gun always stop a bad guy with the gun thing and just trotting up the example of a look what happened. We're proof we're right thing. So, did the did the armed gunmen who came in there to cause a problem actually shoot anyone? Two people are dead. Okay. Uh, because he because and the, he and the gunman, right? He killed two people, okay. and the gunman himself was killed by one shot. Now, if this had been done by the Goonerman Goon Squad, there would have been two hundred rounds fired, and there probably would have been three or four dead bystanders who they would probably blame on the gunman and say, "Well, it was all the gunman's fault," even though the 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 goons themselves are the ones that shot lead everywhere and killed innocent people. So this is why I say... And this is by by no means isolated. Um, When Eric Dorner was running from the police, the police were running from the police. Um, In California, uh, cops found, I think it was a pickup truck or an SUV that vaguely fit the description and lit it up with more than 100 rounds. I mean, these guys dropped clip and uh, dropped a magazine and then reloaded and continued firing into this vehicle with two women in it. Um, yeah. You know, at Empire State Building, there was uh, some armed guy out there. I don't know exactly what he did, but the police shot a few people in the process. And, I mean, yeah, the families may get a payout from the city, but that's not somebody being held responsible, right? Like, right. if I... Uh, you know, accidentally shoot a couple of people in town and I have the ability to stroke a check of a hundred thousand dollars to each of them or whatever. That doesn't mean I'm not going to end up in jail or that I shouldn't. Yeah. The goons have absolutely no responsibility and it's clear that they know that and they act accordingly. So they don't even worry about whether or not they're going to hurt somebody or break somebody's leg or twist their arm off behind their back. I mean, these are the we're coming down in the violence level now. They will hurt you, break your fingers, whatever, because they don't need to worry about you ever coming back and suing them. The government is not going to happen. Acts like they own your body. They really act like that. Well, I mean, they think they do. You know. I, I think that the argument is that they, they – in fact, the argument can be made that they do. So if you look at the lineage of what government is, not too long ago, the argument certainly would be made that the king – Owned you that he was effectively the number one slave master on the surf farm and that, you know, escaping, you know, like you can leave the property or whatever. There's there's certainly people who got away with being bards and traveling salesmen and things like that. But by and large, you know, you lived in the you lived in the vassals lands. You you know, you, you you agreed to all of this. Well, what we have today, the republic that we have today stepped directly out of and it it existed in modernity with these organizational models so if we're electing our king for four years instead of uh, them being you know appointed for a lifetime by dent of their own birth it's only 
marginally different. And the state does claim your body in so much as if you decide to use it to work, they will take the fruits of some of the fruits of your labor. And it, by the way, if they can take one penny out of your paycheck legitimately, then they can take the whole paycheck. It's just how much they decide to leave to you. I mean, really? Seriously? 10% is moral, but 60% is immoral? I mean, come on. Where does this line get drawn? The state already claims more than God ever did in the Bible. Which is why I say that there should not be a state, and the only way that we can ever have liberty is without a state. And this well, is I, that where... may be true, uh, uh, Gene. It may very well be true. But at this point, no one's let us try it. So what I would say is, is although what you know, I mean, well, the king know, isn't going to let you try freedom. But that's the, it's but that's, the king's but that's where the immorality starts, though. If I don't own my, if I can't just own my own land and try living my own little way without getting molested on my land, then I'm not free. I would agree. And. The reason that they you're can't not free. Did, did you think you were? No, no I don't. Um, I knew you didn't. They... If you think you're free, you can't escape. Well, yeah. I mean, or you can't just stay where you are and do your own little thing. They, you know, they're going to come by and they're going to collect property tax from you. Oh, that land that you claim is yours is actually ours. Yeah, you're renting it. You're renting it. It's it's not popular to say this because it defends certain people of certain races, but uh, the Civil War did not end slavery. It merely enlarged the plantation what now it, everybody's a slave yeah exactly there's a guy named uh john uh ainsworth and he does this uh basically how uh reconstruction acts of 1867 talk which is really good uh he's all over he's on facebook and stuff but uh yeah essentially the 14th amendment um you know allowed anyone to willingly become a slave you you can become a u.s citizen now and u.s citizens are property to federal government and that's what everybody essentially unknowingly uh it does they just consent to be property of the state well gene thank you so much for the call maybe something is on your mind other than creepy men 855-450-3733 again that's 855-450 free as in free talk live This is Free Talk Live, talk radio that you control. You can call in and talk about whatever is on your mind. That number is 855-450-3733. And with you tonight, it's Aria. Jay. And Mark. And you know, today, a lot of people are taking control of their own health. They want to avoid the pain of getting sick, the lost time at work, and costly medical bills. Well, good nutrition is key to looking and feeling great. However, eating right all the time can be a challenge. Travel and work schedules can get in the way, or you may not have the desire or time to shop and cook the right foods. So Balance of Nature has the solution. With just three of their fruit capsules and three of their veggie capsules, you get 10 servings of fruits and vegetables, and that's a lot of nutrition. Go online and become a preferred customer, which gives you the best pricing and free shipping. After your third month, Balance of Nature will ship to you at no additional charge, an additional set of fruits and veggies. But this is a limited time offer, so don't wait. Go to balanceofnature.com and use discount code FTL. Again, that's balanceofnature.com. Now, we've been talking about creepy men here, by and large. And, you know, Mark asked the question about whether or not someone saying a particular thing to me was creepy. And my first thought was, well, yeah, Kind of, because I just sort of assumed this person was a guy. But then Jay points it out something like, well, it could be a girl or something, in which case, you know, honestly, no, that wouldn't be creepy. I would tell this person to message me, <laughs> right? So it is all about willingness to engage in some sort of social or sexual interaction with a person that seems to be the biggest factor in who is and isn't creepy. Yes, that's what it is. Yeah. And that's um, that's not good, you know. That that forces me to reevaluate a lot of the people that I've described creepy, as creepy in the past. You know, they weren't actually creepy. 
I just wasn't attracted to them. And they were doing, as Jay pointed out much earlier, and for some reason it just didn't click with me. Yeah. But, yeah, it's totally about attractiveness. Like I was, I, I had asked before if you had ever tried to creep anybody out. And so several years ago, as I told you guys in the break, I made it a point to creep someone out. And there was this boy who was, you know, later teens in high school. Uh, and he grabs this young early teens girl like pretty aggressively by the butt, grabs her right, grabs her butt, and she turns around, and she was really creeped out. She was freaked out. She you can was, see the shock on her she face. She was shocked. So I walked up to this kid and I grabbed him so hard, it had to leave a bruise on his backside. And <laughs> and he looks around at me. I'm like, hey, little buddy, and. Uh, <laughs> And, you know, the girl was on her way to go get a cop, her, her and her friend. Right. You saved this dude. And, and so essentially I saved this dude. And, and he actually turned out all right. I, I ran into him, you know, weeks later and put him to work. Uh, this was a truck pulling event that this, this happened in Northampton, Massachusetts. And uh, so. Uh, and what I like about that is a story of uh, sin and redemption here. Um, so, I mean, you know, this guy isn't written off as evil and bad in the story. Just because he did one thing that certainly, you know, not it's definitely not socially acceptable, not. But um, you know, it seems like in today's uh, outrage culture, once you do it, whatever it is, that's it. You're a bad person for the rest of your life. So, anyways, the young girl who was I don't know, she was at probably thirteen or fourteen, but could I don't really know, but she had said to me. Uh, something like, um, you know, I thought it was one of my friends, like, like her and her girlfriends would grab each other in a butt. Right. And, Fooling around, which is that, fine. That's kind of what she thought it was. And she turns around and sees this guy she didn't know. Right. Who was like a foot taller than so her. So she was shocked. Scared the hell out of her because that guy could hurt her, even though it was like in a crowd of people. Right. And, and uh, he may or where, very well, it's quite possible, that he saw her, her and her friends fooling around or whatever and thought, oh, oh I'll play on that game. Nope. You're not invited. It's possible, but very unlikely he thought that. But let's get into the phones. We've got David calling from New Mexico. David, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, Aria. What you wearing? I'm on a camera. You can go watch it at dlive.freetalklive.com. Is that a cardigan? It is. Okay. Cardigan. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, um... Do you have a I thing for trans people, get David? I, I get the feeling oh, you have a thing for trans people. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I figured you would. You would think that Mark is so handsome too. <laughs> what um, about hey, Mark, me? Aren't I good looking? I just shave. I trimmed my beard the other day. <laughs> but there's no um, camera directly Jay, on me. Jay, would you grab Jay, Jay's butt, when, David? I would grab Jay's butt, but Jay, Jay is the the opposite of Mark and Arya in my description. There's a paradox. Go figure all that all out. I, I don't and, care to. Hey, uh, why don't and, you explain it? <laughs> that sounds like it would be a lot more no, fun. No, 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 no. And, uh, Mark, what were you saying earlier about um, uh, when you were describing Arya? I'm surprised you got away with that. You said uh, not so bright, red hair. What was that? I don't think I said not so bright. Aria is brilliant. Um, Thank you. Six foot two. I, by the way, we did some measurements. I was rubbing booties with uh, Aria here. We were standing <laughs> against, standing back to back. Um, and Aria is probably only like an inch and a half taller than me. So maybe six and a half, six, six inch, six feet, one and a half inches or something like that. Um, whatever it is, Aria is, is, is no, no short stuff. And, uh, you know, bright red hair, uh, felt. And wears a skirt, but, um, yeah. you know. Do you ever wear high yeah, heels? Just, yes. You, okay. I was making fun. I was making fun of your, your word choice. What you had actually said was was uh, uh, describing Arya, uh, not so bright red hair. <laughs> you, put the, the co- you put a comma in there, not so bright red hair. Yeah. So anyway. I don't know what that means. Oh, hey, yeah. hey you, you, you went, you went, I, I had a, uh, the, the, um, your gym description about the dude asking the chick for the phone number thing. But first of all, you went and did it again. You got, you got two people and in out of the same movie, you talked about the invading personal space and Jackie Chan once invaded my personal space. Damn it. 
And then uh, in the what same are you doing, movie, Jackie you, Chan? Though invades your personal space. Hug him back, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah. Michael, Mike yeah. Tyson just coming up to you. You're just kind of you. Mike you Tyson you run. Also invaded my personal space. Uh, I, I, I don't it. look at Mike Tyson and Jackie Chan in the same way at all. Now, now you got three. Now you got three members. I have a lot of respect for Tyson. Episode. He's made some bad mistakes, but overall, he's redeemed himself and become a really good person. Okay. He's he's actually a pretty nice guy. He's just got the impulse control issues when he was younger. Did he have but, impulse uh, controls then, uh, with you when he invaded your personal space, David? No, no. Did he, he grab was your chill. butt? He was Did chill. Mike Tyson grab your butt? No, Is that why you hate gay people? The, he, he he grabbed the butts of the uh, of the ladies in the uh, in the topless establishment. And, uh, That's going to go then, poorly. Uh, actually, <laughs> but then again, who's yeah. going to bounce Mike Tyson? Right. Yeah. And they and probably don't anyway, mind Jack, if you pay him well Mike, enough. Mike, would you please leave? No? <laughs> okay. Never mind. <laughs> uh, David, thank you uh, so much for the call. I, I would love to believe what David believes, right? I, I don't believe he's ever met Jackie Chan. Or Mike Tyson. Oh, I, I think David's led, led a rich and interesting life. He just uh, has retired to the deserts of, of New Mexico. Well, the desert, I think, is rotting his brain. 855-450-3733. Again, that's 855-450-3733. Do you want more businesses accepting Bitcoin Cash and Dash? Now with any pay, you earn passive income for every purchase at those businesses. Finally, a financial incentive to spread Bitcoin Cash and Dash. You made it happen, so you get the rewards. Download the AnyPay Cash Register app and add your cryptocurrency wallet addresses. Then install it at a real-life business and tell us what you did at AnyPayInc.com. AnyPayInc.com. This is Free Talk Live, talk radio that you control. Call in and talk about whatever is on your mind, even if it's just talking about that time Mike Tyson felt you up. That number is 855-450-3733. And with you tonight, it's Aria. Jay. And Mark. And you know, you can join liberty-minded volunteerists, anarchists, and libertarians from June the 29th until July the 5th for Fort Fest 2020 at Rogers Campground in the beautiful White Mountains of New Hampshire. Forkfest happens the week after the Porcupine Freedom Festival, and Forkfest is decentralized, which means no one is in charge, and which means there is no ticket cost. Just, record, just reserve your camping, RV site, or motel room with Rogers Campground for June the 29th until July the 5th. And we're better to celebrate Independence Day than around other freedom-loving activists in the Shire. You can simply relax and go camping with other Liberty lovers, or you can create whatever experience or event you would like others to have. If you're planning an event, be sure to let others know in advance. You can connect with other Forkfesters via the unofficial Telegram chat or the Forkfest forum. Links to those are on the unofficial website, forkfest.party. Again, forkfest.party. So we've been talking about creepy people here, and what I find interesting about this article, as we're going to continue digging into it, is that they seem... Despite outlying, outlaying all of these facts about creepiness and how people really just sort of mean attractiveness, it then goes on to arrive at the exact opposite conclusion about that. So it asks, the implicit answer to what we should do with creepy people is embedded in the question. We should react to them with suspicion and social hostility. Now, I arrived at the opposite conclusion once it really sank in that creepiness really just meant unattractive to me, why would I react to someone who I was not attracted to with suspicion and social hostility? Well, right? That's, that's what some people do. I've watched it before just because, you know, I know. And that's the, what I've done the upon dude looks ugly. retrospect. But that doesn't make it right. That doesn't mean it's the should answer. That's what I did, yes. But what should I have done? Should have just politely declined and gone about my life instead of deciding in my head that they were creepy. And as you pointed out, hitting them with that label that can be so damaging. Yeah, I I don't have this particular problem. I mean, I have listeners that listen to the show and have figured out how to contact me and probably don't understand boundaries. But that's not 
creepy as much as, um, you know, if if I if somebody's sexually attracted to me and I send them the message that I'm not interested, it's usually over right there. How know, about, like that's about it. How about if somebody's sexually attracted to you? They're 350 pounds, solid muscle, um, and, you know, they're waiting for you outside. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the way a lot of girls feel. I would I would imagine that's true, um, how they, you know, that's that's how they see it. And that's what I'm saying is, is I don't have that particular problem. It just doesn't, that doesn't occur. Well, the article alleges that when we fail to react with suspicion and hostility, and so a stereotypically creepy person behaves violently, we then look back on the failure to create adequate distance with a told you so attitude. Right, sure. So this was the legal position taken recently in a case for the wrongful death against a grocery store in Maine. The civil lawsuit was brought by the husband of a woman who was murdered in the store by another regular customer and reportedly creepy customer. Right. So a weirdo comes into a grocery store. Although the offender in question had an angry face, bulging eyes and clenched jaw, exhibited taciturn behavior, was seen shaking a couple of times and sometimes appeared to be on something, quote, the judge said that the grocery store had not failed in its duty to safeguard shoppers from reasonably foreseeable third-party violence. However, the judge left open the question whether, in order to avoid risk, shop owners have a duty to exclude customers who appear creepy but who don't have a known history of violence. You know, the solution is uh, I think you need to carry a gun to work at the grocery store. Well, the government... Well, wait a second. <laughs> um, <laughs> hold on. What they've just said here is the judge is like, oh, yeah, you can exclude people with felony convictions from your grocery store. Did he? Well, he said um, it, it, that haven't exhibited violent behavior, right? Yes. So that presumes that you well, he can... Well, open the question of whether or not the shop owners want to exclude customers who appear creepy, but who don't. Yes, it does strongly imply that he said if they have a history of known violence, you can exclude them from your store. Right. So I'm just wondering, is the next step in this whole weird United States Always crime happening. and punishment play now that um, convicted felons no longer it's welcome happening. in the store? So Walmart has facial recognition. I have a crackhead uncle. Okay. <laughs> who is uh been, who's been, I know that's a true statement. <laughs> right. He's been uh, shoplift he's been busted shoplifting at Walmart upstate New York several times. He goes into a Walmart in Florida and is immediately escorted out uh by their uh security. A Walmart he never been into before. And he in this other Walmart's up in New York and uh uh, so outside, he's talking to the security guy because, like, he was literally going in there to get, you know, depends for his grant for his mother, you know, who, you know, needs to wear diapers, and um, and he'd probably walk in there, put some stuff in his pocket, and walk out too. I don't doubt that. But uh, they had no other suspicion then that it, he was flagged. They were told uh, to to remove him from the store because they actually have a like. Um, He's banned, and but in in New York they they do these. Uh, well, Walmart will do no trespass orders on you if you steal from them. Sure, right? and if you even Sounds the Walmart fair. here in Manchester, New Hampshire, uh, it's got cameras everywhere like a casino. I mean, there's just cameras everywhere at Walmart. Right. Right. It sounds like we're there. Uh, I mean, you know, at this point, if they can ban you for having stolen in the past, and I don't have a problem with them choosing to do that. I would hope that there's some kind of appeals process, but whatever. Um, then what's is the next step? Just saying anybody who's ever been convicted of whatever and you yeah. know, going from there. All they got to do is overlay the um, convict database with that I'm sure you can buy from the federal government. Right. And I'm, I'm also betting that now – Inmates are having their pictures taken in a variety of poses, so, or at least this is coming down the pike, uh, a variety of poses so that the facial recognition software can really get them, you know? You don't have to do that. All I got to do is get a face uh, a Facebook thing and just, you know, uh, put your picture of yourself from 10 years ago and all your other pictures and tag yourself in it and you do all the work for them. That's true. So as researchers warn, what most people consider to be creepy aligns closely with the attributes of individuals and populations already on or beyond the boundaries of social acceptance. 
I don't know that that warning is really necessary because socially unacceptable behavior tends to be what makes a person creepy or uncreepy. It, t- it tends to be what causes someone to make the assessment about whether someone is creepy, rather. Because creepy is based on attractiveness, as we've already figured out, right? And sense of humor. I mean, f- a great example could be a guy like Vermin Supreme who wears a boot on his head and seems like a total whack job, but he's hilarious. And everything he says is like pretty darn like, you know, factually accurate, you know, play on words compared to what government's doing anyways. And then you got guys like Joe Biden who are creepy, but nobody calls Vermin Supreme creepy. And a guy wears a boot on his head and walks around with a bullhorn and talks about giving people free ponies. Yeah, context is definitely important. The mental, the mentally ill and disabled, the physically deformed, those with tics or other abnormal movements or features, the impoverished and the homeless are all more likely to be judged as creepy. Well, again, all of that's because it ultimately comes back down to attractiveness. And the sad reality of the situation is that most people just aren't particularly attracted to the mentally ill, the disabled, the deformed, or people with unusual tics or facial features, or the impoverished and the homeless. Yeah, with with all of this, you know, media just flooding all these all the young people with Vanity Fair and all kinds of you know crap like that. Like, does this Photoshop? Everybody's gonna be beautiful and all this, that, and the other thing. So they do go on to add that you know, with this knowledge, we need to guard against confirmation bias when perceived creeps actually do act in harmful ways. Eight five five four five zero three seven three three. This is Free Talk Live. This is Free Talk Live, talk radio that you control. You can call in and talk about whatever is on your mind. That number is 855-450-3733. And with you tonight, it's Aria. Jay. And Mark. I want to say thank you to C. Hall, who is tonight's amplifier. He's a silver amplifier, which means he donates $5 a month to the AMP program. Now, the AMP program is how we pay for advertising, marketing, and promoting the show. That's what AMP stands for, Advertise, Market, and Promote. It gets you a number of exclusive benefits like the app-only Facebook group, the app-only Discord channel, the app-only call-in line, and some other really cool features. Check it out at amp.freetalklive.com. If you like this show, maybe you sign up for the app program, send some money our way to help us spread the message of Free Talk Live. Again, it's amp.freetalklive.com. See Hall, thank you very much for your contributions. So we've been talking about creepiness, right? And how it's largely based on attractiveness. And then this judge came along and said that somebody being creepy, you don't necessarily have an obligation if they have no history of violence to ban them from your store. Right. I don't I I think that's pretty in in the world where you've got to bake the cake for the gay wedding, you cannot tell businesses that they're responsible for keeping customers safe by looking at other people you know like it's just not fair Uh, now i mean i suppose looking at them if they walk into the store holding a long gun at the ready all right but if they're just weird looking then you're just setting yourself up for a hate crime uh basically this sounds like a really good way for walmarts and targets of the world to put the mom and mom and pop shops out of business by requiring that they have facial recognition software and that they remove people who are on the naughty list uh, for whatever reason. You know, kind of like how the, you know, the Purdue chicken industry, you know, put all the small mom and pop uh, poultry uh, operations out of business uh, that were, you know, several in each town for, for years by using government regulations. So the danger here is some sort of facial recognition database saved by target and walmart and whoever all shared so that if you are ever caught shoplifting or wrongfully convicted of murder or whatever they will all ban you from all of their stores for life or maybe you're not up to date on your vaccines well once they can ban you for something um you know i i think a business should be able to ban people that's that much is obvious but it gets 
just because they don't like their red hair or right. the color of their socks. And, but it's when they start, when customers start saying, you should abandon him, that gets very difficult. I used to work at a health club, and there was this lady who was very, very thin. And she would come to exercise, and we would often have people, usually women, that would come up and say, my God, why aren't you doing something about this this woman who clearly has um, uh, anorexia nervosa, right? And now... I mean, what do they want you to do about it? That's kind of what I would begin asking after a little while. At first, I'm just like, uh... And, but this lady claimed, I, I never saw it, but she claimed that her doctor had given some kind of note to the health club to allow her to uh, be there. Now, I never... Saw it. I don't care as far as I was concerned and still am. But I would think exercising would be a good good thing for someone who had that sort of dieting issue. Burning calories for somebody not taking in calories is probably not a good idea. Okay. But True. Um, regardless, I can't. All I'm doing is letting her get on a treadmill. She could run around the parking lot and there's nothing I could do about it. So... Um, I mean, you know, <laughs> I'm a terrible capitalist for letting somebody come in and, you know, work on the tread. I don't even know what the complaint was exactly, except this woman's looks bother me and I want you to do something about it, mister. And, uh, you know, I, I always felt sort of complicated, like I don't know what to do. And, uh, you know, I d- dealt with the person, and you know, that's saying it, but I, I didn't know what to do. So... I just let it go, and I wasn't ever going to really – I didn't want to do anything about it, honestly. I mean, that comes right back to the whole the mentally ill, the disabled, the physically deformed, those with tics or other abnormal movements or facial features, the impoverished, and all of those are more likely to be judged as creepy, right? Sure. This woman pretty much fits that description. I don't think anorexia is ever considered mentally healthy, so she was certainly mentally ill to some degree, and accordingly – judged as creepy or at least unwanted right so yeah there are some people who just can't tolerate you know um you know ugly people around them for example but then you have joe biden who exhibits enormous amounts of just genuinely creepy behavior like this can actually make your skin crawl kind of creepy behavior right well, he, he's a crooked politician who's worth millions i mean He's got a lot of leeway. He even just brags about, you know, uh, hijacking the Ukrainian government with with uh, money. I mean, to get his son out of trouble. So, what should we think about creepiness when it comes to a coworker, a politician, or a celebrity? Well, to date, a little, very little has been written about the social and psychological mechanisms that make hashtag Me Too allegations compelling. But it has become common and acceptable to publicly elevate and judge sexual conduct and experiences according to the effective language of disgust. Today, sex that leaves a woman feeling gross or sexually non-normative behavior that reads as creepy can be enough to cast a man out of polite society. Yeah, there was a radio host in Canada that was basically kicked out, um, you know, over accusations. Nothing proved in court, mind you, just accusations. Um... And, you know, I I don't know what happened. I wouldn't claim to know what happened, but it's it, it's a complicated situation. Sounds like it. Well, let's go to the phones. we got Ralph calling from Maine. Ralph, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, I was just wondering, uh, what do you think uh, Jael Kushner is uh, doing for uh, uh, New Year's? Who? Jael Kushner. You don't know who Jael is? I do not. I don't either. Oh, she uh, was formerly uh, Ivanka Trump. Okay. She, she, you know she changed her name, changed her religion, denounced uh, Christianity, and uh, took the name Jael Kushner. No, Good I didn't. Um, I, I thought Ivanka Trump uh, just kept her name. Um, she seems to be using it at least at this point. Oh, well, I, I think people would wake up if she started using her uh, cult name. Um, are Jews cults? That, are that, Jews a cult? I mean, isn't Christianity come out of Judaism? Um, I I guess so, but uh, I'm not talking about Judaism. I'm talking about uh, an actual cult. Uh, well, within well, it, what is the name actually, of their cult? The, 
the cult is called Shabbat Lubavitz. And uh, according Any chance to you can a spell lot of that, don't spell that. Uh, shoot it to us on Facebook. Okay, Shabbat. But anyway, her the name that she took, Jael Kushner, when she married uh, Jared and became, uh, uh, well, she, she would. I I don't call it is uh, Jewish, and uh, a lot of the Orthodox rabbis say that uh, Shabbat is uh, basically a criminal organization and a religious cult that. Uh, uh, engages in money laundering and financial fraud. Uh, I mean, that sounds like a verbatim description of like, government uh, to me. They don't follow the Torah like uh, normal Jewish people do. They follow the Zohar and the Kabbalah. So so why you do know? you think that she and her husband are members of this cult? Why do I think? Uh, that's, that's well known that they're members of Shabbat. And they've said it? But Yeah, I just don't pay attention to this stuff. You know, I like I, oh. I I honestly don't care what people's religion is um, yes. when they're in the. Well, if, if they're a, a cult that wants to take over the world and they go about it through uh, criminal means, uh, I think you should care, especially since. Uh, I mean, that's the government in general. Uh, well, it's not president. here on their website. They didn't say anything about taking over the world on their website. Well, Ralph, <laughs> thank you so much for the call again. To reiterate, um, wanting to take over the world through aggression and immoral means is like. A verbatim description of government in general. I mean, it's what the United States has been doing literally my entire life. Yeah, never content with a specific geographic area. States always want more. They want more sheep that they can shear. What, what, the United States military has bases in 170 nations of the world, I think, is the number, out of like 200. It's definitely a lot. Uh, Ralph, again, thank you for the call. This has been Free Talk Live. Um, you can head on over to freetalklive.com and check out the show archive going back more than 10 years. since before For free. Pod- for free. Since before podcasting even started, that's 10 years of Free Talk Live. And, of course, tonight's episode will be up there shortly. We'll be back same time tomorrow night. Again, that's freetalklive.com. Or tune in tomorrow for the video feed at dlive.freetalklive.com. Taxation is theft. Have you heard of LibertyCon? LibertyCon is not only a convention with great speakers like Whole Foods CEO and co-founder John Mackey and Nobel Prize winner Vernon Smith, but it's also unique because you get a chance to network with more than 70 pro-liberty organizations one-on-one for the purpose of career advancement, business, and internship opportunities. Visit LibertyCon.com and use code FTL for a $10 discount on your registration. Learn more at LibertyCon.com.